Hello and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. And on this episode, we're going to be covering... The cooling system. Now, that's something we've got to get right, especially when you consider the amount of power that I want to put through this thing. Sorry I haven't uploaded in a while, but I've had a bit of a busy month. First, my boiler went bang, so I had to put a new one in, and I thought while I was doing that, I might as well rip up all the floorboards and do the insulation under there so it's nice and warm for the winter. And then I got a knock on my front door from a neighbour, and his fence had fallen down. So I spent a couple of weeks putting that up for him. That's all done now. So I've got a bit of time so I can record another episode. So without further ado, on with the show. Now, before I go into the details of the cooling system on my car, I think it might be a good idea just to cover the basics and we'll go over how a cooling system actually works. A vehicle cooling system removes excess heat from the engine. The system transfers heat from the engine into the vehicle interior or the atmosphere using heat exchangers called radiators. Coolant can only transfer heat efficiently when liquid. If coolant boils into a vapor, cooling efficiency drops dramatically. Because of this, the cooling system operates under higher pressure to increase coolant's boiling point, maintaining cooling efficiency. Water pump uses an engine-driven impeller to draw water from the radiator and pump it into the engine water jacket. Inside the engine, the water pump sends coolant into the space between the cylinder walls and engine block called the water jacket. The head gasket includes passages for coolant to flow from the water jacket into the head passages. The cooling system typically includes several additional engine mounted components. To control temperature in the water jacket, a housing containing a thermostat controls coolant flow between the engine and the radiator. The thermostat is a temperature controlled valve. When the engine is cool, the thermostat stays closed to prevent coolant flow. As the engine warms up, the thermostat opens to allow coolant flow and controls flow to maintain a target temperature. The cooling system also includes an expansion space and radiator cap at the highest point. Typically, these parts are at the top of the radiator, but some vehicles use a remotely located radiator cap or include an expansion tank above the engine. Any vapor in the cooling system collects in this space. The cooling system typically includes electric fans to increase airflow through the radiator at low vehicle speeds. Designing a cooling system does require a lot of maths and you probably need a degree in thermodynamics. Now I did consider downloading the mathematical formula from the internet and trying to work all this out, like the uh, pressure rating on the cap, the volume of the water, um, pressure at a certain temperature, all these factors have to be calculated and worked out. However, um, you can take a few shortcuts and you can use the information and the engineering that was put into the donor car. Now, you don't want to make too many shortcuts and you don't want to be making any guesses because if you get the cooling system wrong, well, bad things are going to happen to your engine.
perhaps all those engine explosions weren't all caused by a cooling system, but they're still fun to watch. So let's talk about the cooling system on this car. I'll bring the camera up closer in so you can have a better look. So how do we make a few shortcuts when we're building our own DIY supercar or kit car? Well, one method is that you can use the cooling system from the donor car where the engine came from. In other words, some Audi engineer, or probably a team of engineers, had already worked out the volume of the radiator, the operating temperature of the engine, the temperature and the pressure that the coolant will operate at, and therefore the pressure on the uh, safety release cap on the expansion tank. All this has already been worked out. So if you take everything from the donor car and install it into your car, good chances are your cooling system will work. Basically, the cooling system works in two parts. You first have coolant circulating around the engine. Once that becomes too hot, a thermostat will open and exchange colder coolant, which is inside your radiator, for the hot coolant that's inside the engine. Once that has exchanged, the thermostat will close and then the cycle continues. So as long as you have enough water in your radiator and your cooling system, which is outside of the engine, you should be fine and you should never really have any overheating problems. Okay, that's a little bit simplistic, but it just gives you a rough idea of how a cooling system works. Now the radiator in this car was taken from the Audi A6 C4 donor car, which was running a 2.8 normally aspirated V6. So this radiator matches the engine. I also decided to fit the radiator in the upright position, which is the same position as the donor car. There's a few reasons for that. One of the reasons for keeping the radiator in this upright position was it was designed to work that way in the actual donor car. Now, I could have tilted the radiator forward similar to say a Lotus Esprit. So in the, the Lotus Esprit they tilt the radiator forward, they build a scoop and that's to accommodate for the sloping bonnet line. But that wasn't going to work with my design. You see I'm sort of designing this entire car and I wanted to incorporate some sort of crash protection and so there's like two stages of crash protection on this car. The first is the nose cone. Now we'll go into this in, in another episode when I go into the bumper and, and, and the bodywork. But this car is designed to have two crumple zones. The first one is this nose cone to take moderate light damage and the idea is, I don't know if you can quite tell, but you can just unbolt this whole nose section and remove it. So this is the first line of defence and hopefully you don't da damage the chassis. Then the second line of defence is this crumple zone in here. Your feet are right inside here. So you've got to get through this crumple zone and then you've got to get through this nose cone before you hurt yourself. Anyway, we'll cover that in another episode. But what I didn't want to do is put this radiator lying down and put it in to the nose cone because if you have an accident it's going to cost you more to fix, you're going to damage your cooling system and if this was say in a race or something and you had a minor accident but you could continue to go with the radiator all the way out on the front if you damage it you lose your coolant. Another reason I put it in the upright position like this is because it's extremely easy to replace so if you ever have a leak on this thing you undo the hoses, a couple of bolts, and then this thing pretty much just lifts out. Anyway, I think I'll bring the camera in closer so you can take a look and we'll just cover the 
heater matrix and the blower system as well at the same time. So let's take a closer look at this radiator. Like I said, this is the original radiator from an Audi A6 C4 2.8 Quattro. Hopefully you can make that out, it's a twin fan. And both of these fans are actually fitted into the shroud of the radiator. So it worked out really well. The bottom 90 degree hose there runs into an aluminium pipe, which goes into a 90, and that also runs down the center of the car. Now on this aluminium pipe here, there's a T-piece, and this is for the hose for the heater matrix. Goes into the heater matrix, comes back out, and it goes into the bottom, just inside there. Yeah, it's a bit tight, sorry you can't quite make this out. I'm trying to get you some good video footage of my coolant system. Unfortunately, this gimbal is a little too big to get in there. And I've tried with this um, phone on its own, but it, you're getting like shaky cam, it's not very good footage. So I think what I'll do is I'll just show you a few photographs of um, an earlier time when I first built this car, just to give you an idea of how the cooling system is all set up. Right, here's a few quick pictures and we'll just take a quick look at the silicon hoses that I used on this build. Um, here we go with a uh, 135 degree silicon bend and um, this was so I could loop back in the engine bay. Then we just had some 90 degree silicon bends, different uh, diameters and sizes. Then I had to make some aluminium tubes. This was a T-piece tube used between the engine and the pipes. I'll show you a photograph in a sec. Here's another T-piece aluminium tube. Um, that was for the expansion tank, the hose here. Uh, these are just couplers. And then what I did is I used the original Audi um, hoses and I just put couplers in there. You can see the uh, Jubilee clips. That's just another angle. And uh, that's a, a bleed screw uh, in the coolant system, which I took from the original Audi donor car and that's used in the front there. Here's a picture of looking down between the front of the engine and the chassis. This was before I built the roof, so I could get my camera in. There's another shot a little bit lower down on the other side of the car looking in. Um, if you see at the very bottom, there's that sort of like a hose that loops around. That's that 135 degree hose there. And there's the pipes in the centre of the car. I think you can make that. That's the uh, front of the engine again. And this is the hoses uh, where the radiator is. You can just make out the um, aluminium tubes that run along the bottom of the radiators there. And uh, there's the 90 degree couplers. They are connected to either side of the radiator and then they run down the pipes down the centre of the car. And there's that uh, bleed screw that I referred to earlier on. And that goes into the uh, blower system, the heater matrix. And that's needed, so when I bleed this system, I can get rid of some of the air at the uh, blower side. And these are just some 90 degree uh, silicon hoses at the bottom of the radiator. There's another shot, you can just about make it out. And we're back to the 135 degree silicon bend. While we're taking a look at the cooling system, we'll take a quick look at this blower system which was taken from the Audi A6 C4. Now this worked out really well, it fitted perfectly. Okay, it doesn't have air conditioning, but for the prototype it worked out great. However, 
on the new 2.7T donor car, it looks like I have a bit of a problem. Hello, it's me from the future. Now when I was editing this episode, it came in over 25 minutes long. So I know that's too long for YouTube, and I think some of you might be watching this on your mobile phone, you know, while you're on your lunch break, and you need some time to grab yourself a cup of tea and a bacon sandwich. So over 25 minutes long is too long. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this episode in half, so it'll be part one, part two. So tune in next time to find out why the blower unit in the Audi A6 2.7T might not work on my turbo build project.